before I was like, oh, he's the big homie. Uh, uh, nah, you're not the big homie. You can't get nothing, nothing important done. What's going on there, guys? We back with another one. Today, we got to talk about Stefan Mulberry's response to his cousin, Sebastian Telfair. Now, Bassey appeared on Cameron and May show the other day, and he spoke about several topics, you know, where he ranks in the history of Coney Island basketball players, uh, LeBron, Jay-Z, so many topics. But he talked about his cousin, Stefan Mulberry, and um, it had people looking at their situation in a different way. When Bassey was on the show, he had a lot to say about uh, Starberry and his situation with Jay-Z. A lot of times I see him talk about Mulberry and Jay-Z. He talks about how they always end up in a shouting match. And, you know, he feels like his family, not just Stephon Mulberry, his family hated on his relationship with Jay-Z. Um, but looking at it, it's almost like, they were coming from a good place trying to protect him. Um, at the time, you know, Jay-Z was ingratiating himself with athletes. I'm pretty sure he had the vision for Rock Nation sports back then. He was getting around the athletes as he should, you know, just getting in that community, seeing the ins and outs and uh, forming relationships with players. But um, <clears throat> you can look at it and say someone like Stephon Mulberry had seen it all at that point in his career, and he was being overprotective of his little cousin. Uh, Sebastian even said that his brother put hands on him for hanging out with Jay-Z and I'm guessing you know they were looking at him like you a high school kid you don't need to be out there with him like that let's check out what Bassy had to say and then Starberry uh, response to that and also we're going to look at what May said May said something really great uh, to Sebastian about this and I'll be back let's be my brother put his hands on me about hanging out with, with, with Jay-Z. I'm a little kid, though. Hey, Steph told that nigga Jay-Z to Jay-Z face right in front of Beyonce. Get off a bassy dick. That's why Ho stopped fucking with niggas. I never called Ho. I only called, like I said earlier, I called Ho one time. Ho called me every other time. I never solicited to be around Ho. Niggas call me every day. What you doing? My brother hating on him. Steph tell Steph and Jay started arguing in the restaurant up in Manhattan. I'm not there. Soon Jay opened his mouth. Steph say, "Get off a of bassy dick. Get off of my cousin dick, nigga. Yeah, where the hell you talking about? But get off my cousin dick. So Jay can stop fucking with me. Bass." Out of all of those people that you name, like, who can you call right now? Can you call LeBron and be like, yo, Bron, I need this? Or can you call Jay-Z and say, all of the people that showed up then, can you call them now? Um, nah. Like, but Jay and Bron, that's, that's like, come on, bro. Like, Jay and Bron is living Just in, asking like, a question. um, nah, nah. And I mean, I'm not not to blame it, what, it on them or nobody, but nah. The reason why I'm asking nope. that is because I, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, not to cut you. I holler at that Rich Paul. I holler at that Rich Paul and them. I tried, I tried to like, you know, contact and reach out to them, but you already know how that is. You know how that go. So we got to get back into the loop, do our thing. You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, uh, you already know. We show up, everything fresh. They gonna want to do business. And the reason why I say that is so just like you want to teach Ja Morant something, this is something young up and coming talent need to know that people deal with you when they have to deal with you. When they don't have to deal with you, it's not the same crew of people. And that's what I was getting to when I said who gave you the right advice or who gave you the bad advice, not not highlighting LeBron or highlighting Jay-Z, just In that fact. mindset. That when you're rocking, everybody's coming around. When you get these gun charges and you screaming at the top of your lungs, who was there for you that was back there? That's what I want to know. Who was back Jeez. there? My, my family in Coney Allen. I ain't going to lie. But like I told you, like as far as, yeah, as far as, nah, it's, it's been quiet. 
Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me speak and talk about my little cousin. Because I wrote something and I said something. And I understand my little cousin greatly. I understand him. And I feel him. And my little cousin was great growing up. Um, I don't know if you see the picture of my little cousin up under, up under my arm. The thing that was so amazing about Sebastian, one of the best things that I ever seen anybody do in basketball. And this is wild. <laughs> this is super wild. He did it. He was the most amazing person that I ever seen do this. Do you know this little dude was playing basketball with skates on? Like rollerblades. This, that's how that's that's how gifted and creative this guy was. Like my little cousin was nasty playing basketball with skates. <laughs> how crazy is that? <laughs> he was playing basketball with skates on, yo. So when you have this type of talent, when you have this embodiment to be able to do what he was capable of doing. I can understand why he could feel the way how he feels. And it could be arguably that he could be one of or the best high school basketball players. But to be honest, high school basketball wasn't what I inspired to dominate or to, you know, make into a big thing. That wasn't my my thing because I tell I tell people now it's one thing making it to the NBA and it's another thing playing in the NBA. So when people are like, oh you in the NBA? No, I played in the NBA. I dominated in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? So that's where my mind was and where I was at as far as college, high school those things weren't my concern. I wasn't really focused on being the best high school basketball player. That's not a title that I inspired towards having or doing. As far as the culture and shifting the culture, I'll just leave it at this. <laughs> Georgia Tech sent the private plane to pick me up to try to get me to go to their school. I don't know how much... I don't know how much iller it gets than that. If it's if, culturally, if you're changing the culture, I think if you're the first person to ever do that. You know, I think, you know, that is changing the culture, shifting the culture, you know, through your play. And my cousin, he did that as well. Through the fire, I mean, I don't have to say much. You pretty much know what that is about, it's, it's self-explanatory. But I think, you know, if people thought that I was going to come on the internet and write or say something about my little cousin, they really don't know how I was raised from Mabel and Donald, you know, and how we move and how we get down. Whatever feelings I have towards any person in my family, it would never be amongst you and me speaking about how I feel or what I think. <laughs> it just wouldn't happen. My mom, first of all, I got to answer to my mother after she finds out, you said what about what? You know what I'm saying? So like, that's not going to move in that and it won't, it won't work. You know, my mom would be so disappointed and I wouldn't want to disappoint her or my little cousin from speaking about what he said and what he felt. If that's how he felt and that's what he's saying, you know, that's how he feel and that's what he's saying. So this is not in a, this is not addressing. I love my little cousin and that's what he is. He's my little cousin. You know what I'm saying? And I understand his feeling about how he felt. Um, and I'm sorry if you feel that way. I apologize to him for um making him feel a certain way. Um, and I'll leave it at that. But at the end of the day, you know what it is. You know the vibes. You know what you saw. 
and that's pretty much it. In today's time, I just want to highlight the way Stephon Marbury responded to that because most of the time you see these back and forths on the internet and people say things that they can't take back or it is hard to take back on the internet. But Steph handled that like a true big cousin. As far as the Jay-Z thing, I think just based off of what was going on at the time, outside looking in, I feel like they were being overprotective of Bassey. I wouldn't really want my 16, 17 year old brother, cousin, uh, hanging out with an adult all times of night with, with a certain element around, you know, a basketball player don't really, uh, and especially a high school basketball player don't need to be around a certain element like that with a rapper that, that beef could come their way at that time. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I think that's the way they were looking at it. We know Jay-Z went on and released the Excuse Me Miss remix and he dissed Mulberry because Mulberry, somebody pulled a gun on him at the light. And and uh, that, that's that been an issue for Mulberry since then too. But this kind of puts it in context, some of the back and forth that had taken place over the years between the two. Uh, and I just want to know your thoughts on this, guys. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. To next time, peace.